Hey everyone, so today's film highlights video is long overdue, so hopefully this won't be too long. The first film I want to talk about briefly is Stripes, Bill Murray. It's about two guys, two very unlikely candidates who join the army and their journey there and how they get on or perhaps not with some of their higher ranking orders. And the best scene in the entire film you have to look up on YouTube is the graduation scene. If you've seen the film, you'll know exactly which one I mean. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. It's, or maybe don't, watch the film and then it's, you know, you'll get to it eventually. It's fantastic and I just think it's a, a wonderful film that I didn't think I would enjoy and therefore the fact that it made me quite elated at the end of it meant it was just all the more wonderful. Galaxy Quest is a bit of an odd one. Alan Rickman was in this one, that's why I got it. And it's about a, a bunch of actors who were in a very popular sci-fi show and they're now kind of not really doing anything with their careers. And they do a convention, which is always great. And then they find themselves on a real alien spaceship. And you have to try and put the things they learned on their TV show into practice with this. It's, it's quite comedic. And if you're a fan of conventions and things like that, I think you'll get a lot out of it. Wakewood. Wow, this film is incredible. It's about a couple whose little daughter dies and they find a way to bring her back to life but only for three days. So she's been dead and buried in the ground but they manage to bring her back. And that scene itself, the rebirthing scene, is really quite, quite gruesome and graphic and I enjoyed it too much. But if they don't play by the rules, there are dire consequences and obviously they don't play by the rules. And it takes very dark and nasty turns and I loved it so, so much. And there's a lot of blood. Um, all kinds of different things going on there. It's not for the faint-hearted or for those with weak stomachs, but I thought it was thrilling and I would definitely recommend it. How to Kill Your Neighbour's Dog with Kenneth Branagh. Such a funny film, although it had a bit of a weird moment in it. It's about a writer who's trying to get to grips with making the child character in his latest play feel more realistic. So he enlists the help of a little girl who moves in across the street, which sounds really sinister because he does a lot of observation of this child. And I think, do we do we writers come across like that when we're doing research and observation? It's a bit weird. Uh, but it's very, very funny, very entertaining. There are a few kind of sentimental moments in there as well. And I just think if you're a Kenneth Branagh fan, you need to see this film. I definitely recommend How to Kill Your Neighbour's Dog. Then we have Before I Go to Sleep, which is about a woman who wakes up every morning having forgotten everything. She's got amnesia and she has to find out the truth about how she that amnesia came about because the person who beat her up to give her the amnesia because of the knocks on her head wasn't ever found and only she knows who it was and why it happened and the story's all about unravelling that and obviously with any great thriller story like this there are a lot of surprise things we don't expect and that make it a lot more dark than is than would first appear. Finally, we have Batman Forever, the last of the Tim Burton films that I had to watch, produced by Tim Burton. He obviously directed the previous two in this Warner Brother trilogy, um, Batman and Batman Returns. And then, of course, we have this one. Batman without Michael Keaton, for me, is not as great, especially with this trilogy. But it's not a bad film, and having these other characters brought in, like Two-Face and things, uh, and Jim Carrey playing a role in this as well, it's just a lot of colour, a lot of fun, which I definitely think is one of my favourite things and part of the reason why I prefer this Warner Brother trilogy to see I keep missing out guess in Warner Brothers um, to see the Dark Knight trilogy because I think this Warner Bros one is just so much more colourful and fun and very it's like somebody's dipped the trilogy into acid a lot of the time and that is also prominent in, the, in this third instalment as well and I love Batman and Batman Forever a lot of people were like it's rubbish it's not as good yeah I admit the first two films were better but there's absolutely nothing wrong with this one and you have to watch it. So there we have a bunch of films over the last kind of two months that I have absolutely loved. As always, please feel free to recommend any films that you think I should check out and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye!